his poor example uh, and how the um, apostle chose to put his name out in public and warn others not to behave like him. And we also discussed that uh, putting somebody's name out in public, it's not uh, required every time, but we follow addressing the person individually, initially, and you know, trying to bring correction in that way. And if that is not working, right, then you uh, follow it up with the other stages. And then if the person is so unwilling to change, you know, there might come a, a stage when you have to speak out their name so that others may be warned about this issue as well and uh, you're saving the entire congregation. So Dietrichus is a poor example in this particular chapter. But now John is going to talk about another person, Demetrius. Demetrius is another individual here. And uh, we see Demetrius is uh, exhorted for a good testimony from all. So uh, is a good testimony important? Our faith in God is important. Why is a good testimony important? Do you see this anywhere else? Uh, that people having a good testimony. Okay, good testimony is important. Where else do you see uh, spiritually strong people with good testimony uh, being chosen for the work of the ministry? Correct. Acts. And we have dealt with that, isn't it? Our same, your batch, we have uh, looked at it last week and we talked about the volunteers who were selected to serve food for the Hellenist widows. Uh, and they were people of good reputation, strong in the faith, okay, uh, and good testimony. So our work with the Lord is important, but also the way we walk with the people. And let it be sincere. It's, it should not be like, you know, I must have a good testimony, so let me behave like this. No, not at all. Invariably, if we uh, are sincerely in love with God, we are keeping his commandments, and the way John has said till now, we love one another, it comes through. The good testimony comes through from the good heart. Okay? So Demetrius seems to be a, an individual who has maintained that good testimony. So uh, that is something we notice. And then uh, and from the truth itself, from all and from the truth itself. So basically, he's saying before men and before God, uh, because he's keeping God's commandments. And we also bear witness and we know that our testimony is true. So uh, John is also saying that I'm also giving, um, you know, I, I, I second this. And I'm saying, yes, this individual is faithful. So in this congregation, uh, beginning of the letter, he exhorted, right, Gaius, he said, oh, you all are sincere, you are faithful. Uh, and now he's exhorting another individual who seems to be very special enough to say his name. Okay, the way we saw Dietrichus, his name uh, was spoken. Now Demetrius seems like a good example. So when you share the name of a good person in the congregation, that can have the opposite effect. It can be an encouragement for the people. You know, people can look up to the individual and you know, they can imbibe these good qualities or these right attitudes that the individual has in the faith. So Demetrius is a positive example. And then he concludes this letter. He says, uh, I had many things to write, but I do not wish to write to you with pen and ink. Okay, he is that in-person service uh, individual, Apostle John. So he's saying, oh, come on. It's better to just meet you. So he says, I hope to see you shortly. And we will speak face to face. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing that they had the opportunity to do both to send a letter as well as to uh, actually catch up in person. And then he closes off. He says, peace to you. Our friends greet you. Greet the friends by 
being. So uh, again, a nice way of uh, uh, encouraging where he says, he, peace is usually a blessing. So let there be peace. Shalom over all of you, blessing. Then our friends greet you. You know, that's the way of saying, okay, they asked about you. And you please let them, you please let so-and-so know that we asked about them. So that relationship you can make out, okay, that John is not uh, so disconnected or so high up there that he doesn't know the people. He seems to know, you know quite a few people, at least the main leaders and some of the uh, sincere folk in the church and the insincere folk in the church. So that is his equation with the uh, communities that he is writing. So with this, you know, we conclude uh, the uh, epistles of Apostle John, and uh, we will go on to studying from the book of John, which is in the Gospels. So any thoughts, any questions so far about these three small epistles that John has written? And then we can jump straight to uh, the Gospel of John. So what does this uh, reveal about Apostle John? Like, do you get a picture of him? What kind of a person does he seem like? You can tell me from uh, what is, is yeah. Yes, yes, the person who loves, you will always look the benefit of the person. Uh, that includes a correction as well. So when we see the uh, this the epistles, John is so the lovable person is an apostle of love. At the same time, with the deep love, only concern for the benefit of the church and the health, spiritual health and the physical health and health in every area. So completely, John is a uh, uh, full of love of God, and uh, he see the church the way God wants to be. Yes, yes, Thomas, yeah. So that comes out, you know, that deep concern for every part of the individual. True, true. Right. Yeah, okay, thank you. Others also have commented here. Uh, Kiran says he's loving, overcoming the world, and Dave adds uh, loving and bold. Yeah, that's a good thing, you know, to be loving and bold because sometimes uh, the those of us who are so-called loving, we avoid the difficult questions because it might bring about a conflict. But in the case of John, he is loving and bold also. So speaking the truth in love, uh, that's how he does it. Then Arad says, zeal to reach out for Christ. Okay, so yes, he is zealous. Uh, and uh, I feel like he is somebody who wants to see the connection between faith in the heart and the life that is lived. Okay, so all three of his uh, epistles encourage the believer to live the life. Don't just talk the talk, but live the life. Okay, and uh, that is maturity. Maturity is know the truth but you also walk in the truth so i feel like he is that one apostle who is making a strong connection between the two okay so anything else others you want to add to it before we jump to uh, the book of john okay. good oh yes yes kiran tell them one more thing ma'am listen to other spirit that John mm. also like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what he he is able to 
Good, sir. You mean? No, first John, ma'am, uh, the explain little bit like a descent the which spirit is from God and which from evil and human. Mm. Yeah, correct. So he uh, he is a discerning individual himself, and he also encourages the people. Right? He said, test the spirits. Don't like simply believe every spirit. So, yes, yes. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So we remember that. Okay. So that's a, a picture of Apostle John that we know. And the historians say that when he wrote these epistles, uh, he was uh, quite old, maybe, I don't know, he must have been like, you know, elderly, but like a, a, even among the elderly, quite old kind of a, uh, a age. And uh, his words come like the words of a father pointing out what is important in a believer's life. And he is not just uh, speaking out of the wisdom of age, but if you recall in 1 John chapter 1, he says, look, what I have seen, heard, known, I'm telling you. So he also had that experience with the Lord Jesus. So now, we will look at the book of John, which is more of an account of the life of Jesus, okay, which again, Apostle John has written. So all these uh, epistles, as well as the book of John, he has written it somewhere around 90 AD. Uh, that's what historians trace it back to. And uh, we have discussed earlier that uh, John has not mentioned his name anywhere. So only through his disciples, okay, uh, you are able to track that uh, this is the writing of Apostle John. Uh, and we, we saw that uh, more specifically, I'll tell you the name of the person. Yeah, so uh, it says, okay, Irenaeus, Irenaeus, okay, one of the early disciples, actually more like uh, there was Polycarp, the disciple of John, and uh, Irenaeus is the disciple of Polycarp. So Polycarp is the one who is, uh, uh, you know, like he kind of sourced he refers to these gospels and attributes it to John. Just yeah, excuse me. All right, so uh, okay, so he uh, writes it uh, around 90 AD, and uh, we recognize that this is written by. Him, not because he had mentioned his name, but more because of how uh, we could identify through his disciples. Okay, and in this uh, book, primarily he talks about the life of Jesus. However, it's not just the, uh, the events that took place, but you would see that the manner in which the book of John is written, theologically, it has a, a great bearing on doctrinal issues. The epistles sounded very simple. He just had instructions over there. But in the gospel, it seems like there's like years of theol like God's revelation, uh, which has been imparted to him, he is putting that out uh, along with the events. Okay? And especially Christology, we say, right? The study of who the Lord Jesus is. Uh, so he gives a beautiful description of the Godhead and about uh, Christ. So the uh, Gospel of John is more than the events and more than the eyewitness account. There is doctrine in there there is, uh, you know, it's like a theological, theological treasure 
for a believer and in this book when he talks about jesus christ you will see that he refers to him as the lamb of god the lamb of god okay or he is uh, uh, confirming that he is the christ he is the atoning sacrifice who was sent for the redemption of mankind so you look you can see that john has that understanding so theologically all these truths come up and talking about himself so uh, john writes about different things here but at one point he says you know the disciple whom jesus loved so uh, he is adding a note about himself now whether john was truly um, preferred by jesus it's hard to tell but john has mentioned it like that and said the disciple who jesus loved so some people say uh, they take it positively and they say that uh, it was his attitude that he felt jesus loved him more than any of the other disciples uh, so positive attitude but others say uh, why was john so insecure now why did he have to if he was confident that he was preferred by jesus compared to all the other disciples there was no need to mention that he was the disciple whom jesus loved so there are people who look at it you know negatively also and say oh so insecure this john is he's put a note about himself in the uh, account so uh, this is the way he describes himself now who did he write these letters to the same churches in syria asia minor that he wrote the epistles to he has written these letters also and uh, similar to uh, what the historians say that he probably wrote uh, the epistles when he um, was in ephesus so uh, he probably wrote this one also at the same time so that's a little bit of background for us Uh, about john and no wonder uh, he had told you know what we have seen what we have heard so i have written a account of the life of jesus now if you study all the four gospels we know many of these uh, events that we are talking about they are historical and not mythological uh, many of them are concurrent uh, one like matthew talks about something Luke talks about the same thing. You know, John talks about the same thing. So they are concurrent. So they also help us know the authenticity of the events that took place during the times of Jesus. Uh, and the Gospels are not the only few eyewitness accounts, but we know that there is a lot. There are uh, extra biblical writings as well. You know, things that are not included. in the gospel but uh, writings that were well respected by the jews of uh, uh, these times all of them point to the historicity of the lord jesus christ so how does uh, john begin his book uh, he begins by introducing the lord jesus as the eternal word so uh, matthew he started by sharing a genealogy okay if you recall he says this one we got that one and then the whole genealogy and then jesus comes in that introduction but john has chosen to reveal jesus as the eternal word so he starts off in the beginning no somewhat like genesis in the beginning and he says was the word so which beginning is he referring to he is referring not to the beginning of eternity because uh, you know talking about the beginning and the end of eternity uh, that that doesn't make sense because god is outside of time so beginning end those those terms are not used uh, for god but in the beginning it's a timeline and we are referring to the creation of the world okay because there is a beginning of the world there will be an end as well so we are referring to the world here so in the beginning of the world what happened it says in the beginning was the word so the word here refers to an individual and that individual is the lord jesus christ and that's why i told you it's it's theological it's a deep revelation that 
uh, John is bringing us in the book of John, unlike the three episodes where he gave simple instruction, easy to understand, self-explanatory, repetitive here and there. Okay, so that's easy. But here, that revelation, that deep revelation, uh, is 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 being shared, and that affects our doctrine. That's uh, that affects uh, our understanding of God, which is foundational. So he says, in the beginning, when the world was created, Jesus existed. So, who is Jesus? What can you say about Jesus? When there's the beginning of things, uh, there must be a beginning of every created thing, isn't it? But we are told, in the beginning was the word which tells us that Christ is self-existent. Okay, so self-existence is a quality of deity because only a non-created being can be self-existent. So in the beginning was the word. So Jesus was not created. Thereby, John's introduction, it's quite clear that he's saying Jesus is the Christ. He is God. Just that first part of the first verse of the book of John. In the beginning was the word. And we'll, we'll see, like he'll talk more about the word. But in that itself, self-existent Christ, self-existent Jesus comes out clearly. And he says the word. Okay, So he is giving Jesus the title of the word so the word that we read it's not just uh, a language but he's saying the word of god is christ himself so introduced as self-existent introduced as the word and what else and the word was with god so we learn about the trinity the word was with god two separate entities here or two separate persons it's called because that's how he's addressing here the word and god and god by uh, the the uh, old testament people and even you know the believers who lived during john's time the jewish uh, believers they refer to god as yahweh you know yahweh god and generally they talk about the father so you have the word was with the father. So two separate beings here or two separate persons. So what is the understanding that John carries about God? Trinity. He's not saying the term Trinity. But you just think about it. It is so deep that John has seen Jesus walking and doing the miracles and teaching and all that. But he has a deeper understanding of Jesus. He has understood, even in the unseen realm, who Jesus is. And he begins with that description, the word, self-existent, with the creator. Okay, So two persons, Trinity, the harmony of the Trinity, the, syn the synchrony of the Trinity. And the word was God. So he attributes deity. To the word so he's saying look the word was with god so jesus was with the father what a bold state first slide and jesus is god and jesus was god okay so his book starts with the introduction of jesus as the christ the messiah as the god deity in the Ephesus, what was he trying to advocate he was saying the Gnostics, they say that Jesus is not human. Don't believe them. Don't eat with them. Don't greet them. Don't receive them in your homes. Those who say that Jesus was not human, hear what he's doing. It's actually the other side of Christ, the deity of Christ. So he's, he's hammering it down and he's saying, look, Jesus is deity. Jesus is God. Word was God. So, 
it could for somebody who doesn't believe it can sound very blasphemous how can you say that jesus is god how can you say that the jehova is equal to uh, jesus human being he said look no i have over the years the revelation that i have about christ is deeper than what i saw him doing in the beginning was the word he had always existed not only when he came to the world the word word was with god so he's always been with god right and he is god himself so that is the introduction that john has for jesus he was in the beginning with god so he is reiterating you know that's a way of it's a very poetic way of uh, uh, putting that out for us and we know the meaning is the same right he was uh, in the beginning with god yeah so the, the father and the son their relationship is emphasized then moving on verse 3 he says all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made so we attribute creating the act of creating to the father usually right but here there is an engagement or an involvement of christ with the creation of all things all things were made through him without him nothing was made that was made so is christ part of the creation does he have a role in creation yes very much even jesus has a role in creation okay so that is something for us to note and everything was created through him so another extension of this you know what uh, we can understand is because he is the word and we know god said let there be light and there was light so when god wants to create something what is the raw material which he would like to use what is the raw material which god has used to create nothing okay there is nothing okay god wants to create something how is he going to create it normally his word. word his word correct correct so that is what we see here so through him without him nothing was created but on through him everything was created and who is jesus he is the word right so there is a part that the word or jesus plays in creation in him was life and the life was the light of men so in him again referring to the word of christ we see that there was life okay and this word life if you look it up it is the word zoe okay the greek word zoe now zoe is the god kind of life it's not just this human life you know we live and we do our lives we die and that's it so it's not referring to that kind of a life so that is bios but john writes about god's life which is zoe life which is a greater form of life which god has come to offer to us his way of living his life is abundant life the zoe in life he says in him was zoe and the zoe was the light of men or a light of men would refer to um you know the 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 revelation the understanding the guidance the hope that mankind needs and through the life of god you know, god shed that light on the life of man so in this world right there is there is darkness now john will talk about this he says and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it so 
the graciousness of god he came to give man what his life zoe life and that life is the abundance the guidance the direction the hope that mankind needs and god came to shed light in the darkness you know we talked about this in uh, you know when john said it the world right there are all kinds of things of the world the temptation the pride the um, deceptiveness of, of uh, you know uh, uh, worldliness and he encouraged the believer don't get caught up in those things so there is darkness in this world but he says that jesus christ is that shining light the light shines the darkness and darkness did not comprehend it or the people of this world living in their worldliness so they are still not able to understand about jesus christ so that's a john's way of putting it across to the people okay moving on and then now the introduction of jesus it, we can't say it is over in fact if we sit on these uh, few verses we can talk about it for till the end of your course just five verses because there is so much depth in it okay uh but we have the main thoughts here we have understood okay jesus self existent jesus is deity um jesus is is a creator okay jesus uh, has has brought the life of god and his light shines in the darkness and that's what uh, mankind needs so we have understood for an extent he's the word okay we have understood that a moving forward John is introducing another individual. He says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Okay, so he is talking about the responsibility which was given to uh, a person. We know about John the Baptist. He came as a forerunner to the Lord Jesus. He came to proclaim and announce. that uh, you know jesus would come and uh, he would he would uh, baptize people in the holy spirit and all of that so uh, here this person is going to talk about thank god just a minute so he talks about john so he puts it in there verse 6 there was a man sent from god whose name was john okay now coming back a uh, little bit about john but again jesus is in the picture he says this man came for a witness and that's quite uh, self explanatory he came to proclaim about jesus to bear witness of the light okay. fine that's also understood to bear witness meaning uh, to to speak about the light to introduce about and who is the light now earlier in the beginning was the word and now john is referring to jesus as the light so bear witness of the light that all through him might believe through the preaching of john the baptist through the uh, sharing of john the baptist he was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light so he is clarifying and he saying look there was another man by the name of john but try to understand his role now he is not the christ but he had a responsibility uh, and he came to be a witness of the lord jesus christ and he came to speak and proclaim about the lord jesus christ now he says that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world so john came preaching about whom about the lord jesus that's the point so we want us to clear cut that john is not the messiah then he says he was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him he came to his own and his own did not receive him so talking about jesus again so true light is another uh, way of introducing jesus why because you know uh, when we talk about redemption when we talk about atonement when we talk about 
uh, a man who who is lost okay and uh, in the world there is a corruption of sin so there's no yes the general goodness of god is there but uh, there's also the ill effects of sin in the world but when we come into a covenant with god when we experience the forgiveness of god and then we come into a covenant with god the way uh, john said born of god remember he said we are born of god so that born of god we can actually live a different life on the earth and it's based on the true light of god which we have in us even though the world is a dark place okay and that's what you know john is referring to over here he says that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world so there is a hope you know light when we think about light it it, it is positive and uh, in the darkness if you don't know where to go it's pitch dark in the night you have to step out you have to go somewhere uh, and you don't know how to go maybe you've gone for to a campsite or something you know it happens to us right and it's so dark and we just want to go for a walk how to go we to carry the torches to put some light so when there is light there is a way you know how to go you know how to navigate so in the same way the true light of god and he says for every man the lord jesus has brought that hope in this dark world but unfortunate he says he was in the world so right now john is writing 90 ad 100 ad but uh, about 60 years prior jesus was living here in the world so he says he was in the world and the world was made through him so he himself is the creator of the world and then he says and the world did not know him isn't that so sad now john uh, obviously he has seen the trial of jesus he has seen the rejection of jesus and he has seen the betrayal he has seen the pain that jesus went through and uh, all that must have you know he has thought about it for years he must have prayed about it for years and uh, the holy spirit has given him the revelation and he he is saying look the world itself was created by god through him and the world did not know him how sad that your own people you know it, it's like just i don't know what is the closest illustration you can have to this but something like a mother taking care of her children but at the end of the day the children if if they say something like who are you we don't know you how does it feel it feels really uh, you know it hurts you so deeply because you have poured out your life and they have sort of come out of you right like you you have given birth to them and today they don't stand and acknowledge you so that's the pain of god where john is saying look he was in the world the world was made through him the world did not know him they just did not uh they did not uh, know many yes they have seen the man jesus christ but to know him for who he is the way john knows him the word the true light okay uh, and all of this that reality the world does not know that's so so sad he came to his own and his own did not receive him so that that uh, uh, sense of rejection there so has uh, jesus experienced rejection of course and it says he came to his own and he came for right in in, our, in another way when you look at it there was no reason why he should actually come and do all this but because he loved us he came for our sake and what was the uh, um response that we gave him we rejected him the world did not receive him or the people who he created they did not receive him but now what does john say verse 
but as many as received him to them he gave the right to become children of god to those who believe in his name so he is making a distinction in general the world they are not receiving okay but among them those who receive so john is also one of them those who have received him or uh, we say right born again john will talk more about being born again later and he also mentioned about born of god earlier uh, but you know he he is saying here that those who are born again or those who have received him to them he gave the right to become children of god so in this world where there is darkness and jesus shines as the light the children of god are those who have received him and he says the right to become children of god okay so there's more about us being heirs and joint heirs and having authority and dominion you know how he spoke in the uh, um, the book of john and he said this is our victory we overcome the world so as children of god we live in the dark world but we can overcome this world so he gave us authority to be children of god those who believe in his name so uh, what is required for us to become children of god receive him believe in his name or in other words we encourage people to be born again come into the kingdom of god who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of god so here is the explanation for being born again so this birth is not a human birth and that's why he is using terms like blood will of the flesh will of man because all these things are human birth but he says of god born of god okay amazing amazing so there is a second birth that we are told about and we can have that and when we have that second birth which is a spiritual birth uh, what is the advantage that we have in this first chapter john is saying that um uh, we have the right to become the children of god okay so that is the beauty in it now he is going to talk a little more about jesus verse 14 a very beautiful verse it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us so referring to the lord jesus as the word he is already said in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god now that word became flesh so god became man that's what he's saying god became man and lived in our midst so he left behind all his glory as god and he came to dwell in our midst and we told that we saw his glory the, the glory of whom we saw the glory of this man jesus christ on the earth the glory as of the only begotten of the father so the glory of the son is some term that is used to describe this is sonship glory so the lord jesus has a glory in heaven which he left behind and he came to the world in the world which glory did he walk in or which nature did he take on he took on the they call it the sonship glory so he walked with the sonship glory here on the earth the only begotten of the father and how was this glory here it is full of grace and full of truth okay so full of the grace of god the mercy of god and at the same time you know there's a beautiful connection of grace and truth you can't have only grace without the truth you can't have only truth without the grace so both grace and truth mingle together you see it in the life of the lord jesus christ and that is the kind of glory which he carried here on the earth so what we will do is we will stop at this verse and we will 
continue from here in the next class. But before we uh, wrap up in a few minutes, any thoughts, any comments? You want to add something to what I shared just now? Let's do that, and then we will pray and close. Are you all understanding? Okay, fine. Good, 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 good. Good. That's nice. That's good. So it's probably a repetition of uh, Christology, which you've already completed. But uh, that is John's understanding. So he's putting it across in a very beautiful way. Okay, good, good. So uh, yeah, you're getting a grasp of things. That's nice. Uh, let's do this. Uh, maybe you could read through uh, this book. Start reading a couple of chapters at a time and then come to class. Then it makes things all the more easier. Uh, we will pray and close right now. So I'd like to request somebody to please go ahead and pray. Uh, Prince, is it possible to pray? Are you able? Okay, sure. Are you hearing? Please pray. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord. This time, Lord, we cover, Lord, John, the book of John, Lord, the revelation, how you reveal to us, Lord. You dwelled among us, Lord. Thank you for this. Lord, and also your revelation that we receive, Holy Spirit helped us, that we understand very nice, Lord. Thank you, and submit all things in your hand, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you, Prince. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, I have not yet posted your assignment. I wanted to do it last week, but it didn't happen. So this week, uh, it should be up. So please have a look at it, and you will have enough time to uh, send it in as well. OK? All right. OK. Bye. Bye, class. Thank you. See you again. See you. Bye.